7.42 in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, with restaurants closed and more people, uh, more working people at home or working from home, it, there's no doubt that millions uh, will be enjoying more home-cooked meals around the world. However, economical constraints of the COVID-19 pandemic and the task for preparing full-blown meals can not only prove to be frustrating, but also quite repetitive and boring, doing the same thing over and over again for a whole heap of people who are always hungry, who have always want this, always want that, complaining and that sort of thing. How can we add a little spice to our meals while still shopping on a budget with people very, very concerned about uh, how much money they have still available to them and so on? Well, we chatted on the phone last week with celebrity chef Jason Piru. He's with us now via Zoom. We're going to continue that dialogue, expand that dialogue with Chef Jason. Uh, good to, good to, uh, to have you with us uh, once again, Chef. Uh, what advice would you like to give when we, when we talk about this task for people of preparing one nutritious meal? Meals on a budget and keeping it interesting. Hello, good morning again for Zero to all your viewers and listeners out there. Yes, I mean, you just said it, you know, it's a, a mundane thing, it's rather banal these days. People are eating uh, foods that, I mean, <laughs> could be quite monotonous every single day. Chef, I'm eating stew chicken every day, curry chicken every day. I'm fed up, I'm fed up, I'm doing, I wish I could go out and eat. And uh, it's, it's a bit challenging, and people are getting frustrated. So I said, you know what, let's talk about uh, three areas today. We want to talk about uh, eating tips during COVID-19 period, um, the challenges of uh, eating healthy, and some some decisions to make to make our life easy during this period of time. So Fazir, um, we must remember that we are home, we're working. It's difficult to, <laughs> to, to, to somewhat be active, especially when you're home and sitting at the desk. And we tend to snack a lot. I know people are saying that uh, they're making a great relationship with the refrigerator right now, and every single time they open it, it's like they expect goods to arrive magically. You know, it, it wasn't there three minutes ago. They open it again three minutes, and it's the same thing they're looking at. So these are just some common problems. But, I mean, I say when we're shopping, we need to take things into consideration. And uh, let's stock our fridge with some stuff that would boost our immune system. I mean, good foods will obviously boost our immunity levels. So I say, make sure we have a, a good supply of fruits. We're talking about apples, grapes, popo, melon, all these things. Um, these obviously propel a lot of energy into our system to keep us healthy and even fights off flu-like symptoms. Um, in terms of sweet potatoes and provisions, they are excellent. They're economical during this time and they yield very well, especially for a family. Um, yesterday I had boiled cassava and um, stew chicken, and I was amazed to see how well it married well together. Yes, it's a rather monotonous thing, but it was really economical, especially to feed a lot of people at home. Um, greens such as spinach pump, and even pumpkin, they marry very well. So even looking at things like kalaloo, um, pumpkin chokers, these are rich, obviously, in terms of veggie content. So propel good skin, magnesium, zinc. And these are the things that we need right now, especially as our kids are at home also, and they're doing their studies and so forth to help boost that uh, level of uh, uh, immunity in their bodies. Um, when we talk about things like dry pantry goods, I want to talk about things like pulses, beans, red beans, split peas. These, again, are very economical during this time, and uh, they're, I mean, they, they yield very well. So doing things like uh, kitri or split pea rice, cook up red beans and rice and playing around with your spices and herbs inside there, stuff from your backyard, your shadow and your fresh herbs, gives it a lot of vibrancy and vivaciousness to the dish. So let's look at some of those things also. Um, sweet potatoes provisions, as mentioned, they help control the glycemic index. So they're excellent in terms of uh, people who have uh, sugar issues. So feel free to delve into those areas also, obviously in moderation. Uh, we want to talk about frozen goods. Uh, they can be convenient at this point in time for zero, but at the same time, I always say try purchasing items such as meats, chickens, whatever you're eating, goat lamb. Go to your nearby vendor, your depot, and um, have them cut it up for you. You bring it home, season it up, package it, and portion it. For zero, what goes on here is that you are able to now portion out these items, have them there in your refrigerator or freezer, and you can then take out what you want at this point in time. This is a good point in time right now for people to start using recipes. A lot of people have been writing to me and telling me, hey, I need a recipe for this, for this, a biryani. And they're trying it. They've been very creative this time. And I'm very happy about that. And I salute them when they send me the pictures and say, look what I did. 
I made a biryani. I actually made pilau for the first time. I did a roasted duck with orange sauce. And I'm amazed to see that the level of uh, the culinary repertoire that Trinidad and Tobago nationals are actually exuding at this point in time for zero. So, are, are, you, con great, are great you concerned though, Jason, um, that you know you, you you talked about you 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 reference people just sitting around snacking and so on, and, and we remember the phrase couch potato. From, from many years ago yes. that we got from the United States. Do we have plenty of couch aloo sitting all over the place in Toronto and Tobago right now? <laughs> I love it. I'm going gonna, gonna to take that. Couch aloo, yes. Um, I have a good friend, um, and he told me the other day, he said, listen, he buys this value pack of snacks, at the 25 packs, and he said it only lasts like a day and a half because he's just snacking and snacking. I said, what are you doing? He said, but there's pretty not much to do. I'm just watching Netflix. And he says every, probably every 45 minutes, he gets up and he eats. I said, this is bad because not only a snack savory, but they're also sweet ones. And these could also alter our mood at some point in time, Bazir. So you're eating a lot of sugar items and it's yo-yoing your emotions. And sometimes you're cramped with people in the house and you could fly off the hook sometimes because you're getting frustrated. These salty items also release the high blood pressure. You think these snacks, these potato chips, these salt prunes, these chalk, oh, oh my gosh. So what I'm suggesting is that there are ways to do this. Let's cut the fresh fruits. Let's cut the fresh vegetables. Let's have it inside the refrigerator. Let's do snacks, oats. Let's play around with snacks that has oats inside of it, granola. Let's look for recipes that you can make your homemade granola bars with grains and nuts, raisins. All of these are good for us at this point in time. Rather than drinking sodas and all these different flavored drinks, I was saying, why can't we then take pineapple, cut it into chunks, you know, put it in the water to flavor the water. So we drink more water on a daily basis. And then we have the fruit at the end of the glass. Let's do cucumber waters. Let's make fresh juices at home. I see citrus vendors all throughout these West corridors selling stuff, even in the vend vending market. And we can make juices. I bought a watermelon yesterday and I'm going to be juicing it today. So it also helps us economically because melon is actually $2 a pound right now, maybe even cheaper. You buy a big 50 pound melon, you have over a gallon of watermelon juice for you and your family at this point in time. So, we need to, you know, stop this whole couch aloo behavior, <laughs> couch potato, as you would say. <laughs> In, indeed. I, I'll, I'll copyright that, that phrase, by the way. Um, but, but just in, in the couple of minutes that, that, we, that we have left, Jason, what, what are the most important fundamentals from your point of view? Because at the end of the day, you have to be mindful that you, you don't want to have a situation where the lady of the house or whoever does the cooking, whether it's a man or whatever, you're spending the whole day, you know, that's sometimes tedious task of prepare, preparation and so on, and, and people wasting the food and, and all that sort of thing. What was it, some of the important pointers you want to give in a very challenging time? Okay, so during this point in time, I could even attest it. I, I'm, I'm a part of a family. And with everybody home, it's hard to satisfy everyone's palate because this one wants that, this one wants that, this one doesn't eat that. So there's a need to be a compromise during this point in time. We need to know that this is temporary for zero and we will get over this. So let's try new planning. We, we say, okay, this is what we're going to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so people know what they're in for. They set their mind to it. Let's have a treat day. I'm telling you personally, my family, tomorrow, Friday, I'm doing fried chicken. And everyone is looking forward to it. But during the course of the week, we're eating things like sweet potato, tuna, and whatever the case may be. It may not be that fancy, but at the end of the day, we look forward to something that is a luxurious item or a comforting item, rather, on Friday. So let's have some compromise during this point in time. Another thing that's making that that is making headway right now, just as we're discussing this on Zoom for zero, let's have parties with other friends via the phone. So what are you eating? Could you share recipes with me? Let's dine together. We said that we set up the technology and your colleague in the next part of the country, we're sitting with his two friends and what are you eating? I'm eating pasta. So what are you eating? I'm eating kitri. What are you eating? I'm eating pilau. I'm eating roasted duck tonight. And we're like, oh, this looks good. And we feed off each person and we share. We get people to more inclined to try these recipes and to stay in touch. The issue now is that things are not readily available in the supermarket. Our favorite brand is not there. So let's be economical. Try new brands, be creative with it for zero at the same time, but also, what isn't there will not hurt you. So if you don't buy sugar, snacks, and all these items and put them in your pantry, they will not be there. Let's buy other items to refill those items, such as carrots, cucumbers, granolas, grains, or fruits, all these items. So it starts with us. It starts with a little bit of dedication, some intelligence and education, but also we need to be structured during this point in time. 
And in the final couple of minutes that, that we have, uh, Sh Chef Jason, because, as, as you said, because of the restrictions, because of restricted incomes as well, maybe we can't have all the important stuff that we used to enjoy all the time. Some of us still trying for that and so on. As, as a chef yourself, is this allowing you to explore new dimensions in, in, in new, new uh, ingredients and so on? Or, or have you been doing that anyway already? Part of my career is actually delving. I'm a huge advocate of using local produce. That's very important. So I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to take international concepts and swap it out with local items that we have here. I'll give you a classic example, risotto, a popular rice, Ita Italian rice dish. And it's, it involves cooking the rice grains in wine and butter and so forth and stock. And uh, I have actually taken the initiative to take cassava, cube it up into small little pieces and cook it gently in a little bit of stock, a touch of butter, so you get the luxurious feel there. It's something different. And then I fold in a little bit of caraloo bush in there, just for some greens. I puree a little bit of pumpkin inside there. So it's all 100% local, right? If you get where I'm coming from. And that goes well with something as simple as stewed chicken. It's amazing. So yes, I'm getting very creative. And I, I always say, you put people in hot water sometimes, and they will find a way out of it and how to deal with it. And I'm seeing people who I thought could never cook or didn't even have the faintest touch to be in the kitchen preparing masterful meals just with a little bit of guidance patience dedication and just following ingredients and asking for advice it's amazing for zero we are not going to be the same after this people are going to spend more time in the kitchen and i think what comes out of this what they learn from this is that hey i don't need to be spending all this money i indeed. can actually good, feed good, my good, family economically good point indeed raw, chef, chef jason Chef, you're wetting my appetite at the wrong time. I'm fasting, I'm observing the fast and so on. But in, indeed, I'll, I'll wait until this evening to see what's on the table when it's time to break the fast at just around 6.20, 6.25. Chef J Jason there uh, giving us, Jason Peru, giving us a lot of important tips and advice in relation uh, to dieting, meal plans and so on. At a time when we could just be sitting down on the couch laughing and getting fatter and fatter and unhealthier and unhealthier in that regard. News coming up and then we, uh, we'll, I'll be back in fact to wrap up the show.